Hey guys, welcome to the Dinny Crow Show. Today I'm joined by Mikey Olden. We're going to be talking all about Mikey's life and time. For anyone who doesn't know you, you're, you're currently a chef in Bird Pizza in Cork. Yeah. Um, you're, you're loving life at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess we're going to be going back and we're going to be looking at maybe some of your darker times, if that's alright with you. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about maybe how you came, got into kind of recreational drugs, uh, for want of a better word? Yeah, yeah. If that's alright. Um, yeah, it's going back a bit now, like, you know what I mean? And um, I, uh, I, I suppose I started off using drugs and stuff and I started with uh, weed, cannabis, like, uh, just socialising, like, you know what I mean? Getting a laugh. It was kind of new. A new sense of confidence and stuff like you know what I mean. Um, I, I like enjoyed it. It was kind of once a week, maybe at the weekend and stuff with friends and stuff, and I enjoyed it. And uh, like I never thought it would ever escalate into a problem, but like the more I kind of started going out, like and, and and the more I started to like grow up, I suppose like the hair the drugs started coming into it, like you know what I mean. The the, the ecstasy, the cocaine, and, and and like it just gave me a little bit of an ego, like you know what I mean. It, it kind of taking drugs and it gave me a new sense of confidence, I was able to talk ways I couldn't talk before, um, you know, like, with, with me, a big thing with, with me, like, from when I was very young was the ego, like, you know what I mean, like, I need something to fill myself, and, and going through all of what I've gone through and stuff, and speaking to so much youngsters and stuff, I've realised, like, that, that this is kind of coming back to when I was in school and stuff, like, mm-hmm. and, like, I was always the smallest person in my class, I was always the smallest person there, and, and I kind of find it felt something, to, needed something to fill it to prove to people that, 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 that I was I, I was okay, do you know what I mean? And I, and I could stand up for myself and stuff. And from a young age, boxing, that's what I got into, like, you know what I mean? And, and then I, and I was all right because I had that ego, you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess and, so. And kind of when I, when, I, when, I, when I got older and stuff, like, the boxing went, and the drugs and the partying kind of scene came out, like, and then that was my next ego, like, you know what I mean? Um, and, like, fucking box. Oh, uh, oh, I was cursing this lock. Box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, what I was saying there now is, like, do you know, as I started going out more and stuff, um, cocaine came into things like, and I, I just fucking fell in love, like, you know what I mean? Um, it was a honeymoon period, like, do you know what I call it? Like, I remember I took my first ever ecstasy tablet, like, and, and then I went, I took tablets three nights a week for like nine, ten weeks straight. Jeez. Um, it, it was just a honeymoon period, like, do you know what I mean? I have a very addictive personality, like, yeah. uh, as you know, like, do you know what I mean? And like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I just excel, and like, I, I, I never seen the progression in drugs, like, you know what I mean? And I, and I don't think many people do see it, like, and, like, in the space of a year, like, I was gone from using drugs once a week and stuff at the weekend with the lads and stuff to every day, like, you know what I mean? Um, that, like, I, I remember my uncle passed away from a, a drug overdose uh, with five years ago now, like, and, uh, you know, I went to news at his funeral, like, and, and stuff, like, and it kind of around in and stuff like where I kind of started getting worse and worse, do you know what I mean? And it was every day like I was using drugs, like like generally like everything that revolved around drugs, like um, like I'd need a joint to get up and go and walk to the shop, and, and if I had marijuana or I had something, I'd always think about the next something, and I never have enough, and and I, and I need more, and like I felt when I didn't have them them inside me that that I couldn't talk to people, and and, and it just kind of got it just escalated really really quickly, um, like. It was crazy, like, do you know what I mean? Like, how, how fast it escalated, like, and, and like, do you know, it was grand, I was using drugs and stuff, and a few of my friends started noticing, like, do you know what I mean? That I was, that I was getting bad and stuff, and uh, I, I just kind of, I just kind of ignored them, to be honest, like, do you know what I mean? And I kept doing it, like, but like, but the thing was, like, is people can go and take drugs and like, they can stop, but I wasn't stopping, like, do you know what I mean? Mm, I, I, I get I, you. I was getting drugs and I was going to work the next day, but drug, I was taking them there, and like, I was hiding it from my friends and my family and stuff then, like, do you know what I mean? Fair enough, the recommendation use, like, but then, it was using it when I was hiding it from people, when, it, mm. when, when, when I didn't even realise I had a problem, like, at this stage, you know what I mean? I just thought it was normal, like, and I kind of got comfortable in the uncomfortable with drugs, like, um, and like, from there I went on, like, and, uh, I suppose like I got fired from a few jobs and stuff over over my behaviours, over being late, over being unreliable, like and like my kind of morals as a person started to drop really, really quick, like, you know what I mean? Um like I didn't really care about my appearance anymore. Um, I was just throwing on anything, like, you know what I mean? I uh, I didn't care of who I was fucking over to get the drugs from, even though I knew I wouldn't have the money to pay for them. Mm. I just went and got them anyway, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I thought I needed them, like, I thought I needed them to go to the shop, I thought I needed them to go out, I thought I needed them to do anything, go to work, like, you know what I mean? And, uh, like, 
I didn't care, like, and I got myself in some sticky situations with some people over that, like, and, and, and like, my family, like, I, I walked all over them and I walked all over my friends, uh, which is something I really find hard to speak about now because, like, it's, it's crazy that they stop by me, like, do you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I'll get to that. But, like, I, I stole from mom, I shouted at them, I, I hit my father, my brother, you know, I, I, I done horrible things while I was under the influence of drugs, like, and, and, and I didn't care, like, at the time, you know what I mean? I, uh, I generally did not care, like, I used to go missing for days from home, like, they were up worried, sick, like, do you know what I mean? And, and I didn't care because I was selfish and it was me and my drugs, like, me and my drugs we became for anyone and everything. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's just, grand, it's, grand. it's just, it's just when it comes to my family and stuff. Yeah, like, I just, I, 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 I keep, I keep oh, going. Like, yeah, it. no worries. Um, and like I suppose it went down like, and, and, and I remember I moved out of my family home like literally just so no one would annoy me, and, and people would leave me, like leave me alone to use drugs. Like there wasn't even a TV in my room. Like it was just me and my drugs. The only time I'd leave is to go out and sell something. Like you know what I mean? Just enough to keep going. Like just enough to take over and stuff. And I suppose it was around then, like where, where, where I started feeling the guilt and the shame towards my actions, towards people, and and what I done to people and stuff. To with these thoughts and emotions and and, and how I felt like I, I just used more drugs to suppress them feelings and suppress them emotions, and suppress the guilt and the shame I had towards myself for what I was doing and who I'd become and and the self hatred kind of started then, like you know what I mean. And I uh, I went through a good few years of the self hatred and. The paranoia and the, and the, the anxiety and the depression. I know when people say this a lot, like and, and like everyone has mental health. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but like I, I I use drugs. This wasn't recreational use now anymore. This was using drugs to suppress emotions and feelings and suppress my mental health. Like, you know what I mean? Because I thought by it was basically blocking it out by using drugs, and then it, in the end it was making it worse. And it was like I was chasing my tail. It was just an ongoing cycle. Like, and. Uh, the self hatred started and their thoughts started like uh, and I'd say it was about three years ago and I would say it was my first suicide attempt, like you know what I mean? Uh, and this is something I I find hard to open up about but but I, I like opening up about it because it is a big thing like in this society now like and so many people I know my friends passed away friends have passed away from my family, do you know what I mean? And, and it's crazy like um but like I remember my first suicide attempt and, and, and I woke up from it like and, and I thought of nothing of it and I just went and used more drugs again the next day, you know what I mean? And, and like, I was like, oh, it was just really bad last night and, and I kept going. But like, the dark thoughts never went away, like, you know what I mean? It, it got to a stage where it was every day and, and I was hating myself and I was hurting myself and, and it, it was just a horrible time, like, you know what I mean? And that went on for nearly two years, like, you know what I mean? And like, I was, I was well able to like, be there and act all happy and whatever in front of people and have a lot of different masks, I call them, like, you know what I mean? Like, depending on who I'm with. I, I'd act differently um, just to get what I wanted and just so people wouldn't know I'd be crushed inside, you know what I mean? So I can put on the laughter and joking for a second and, and then I go home and I'm by myself and I'm crushed like um which 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 is which was a really hard time, like, you know what I mean? And again, I didn't care like the amount of times I was hospitalised, the amount of times I tried to kill myself, the amount of times that that, that I had these suicidal thoughts and I never opened my mouth because I thought I was alone, like, you know what I mean? I, I, I really did think I was alone. And, and I was the only one feeling like this, and I was the only one that that, that thought like this, and the only one that acted like this, and, and and I was just in a really, really dark place for a long period of time. Like, and again, all I done was use more drunk, drugs, 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 and drink, and like it was just a vicious cycle. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and the progression had just taken over. Like, you know what I mean? I wasn't speaking to friends, I wasn't speaking to family. I was kind of really just wrapped up in myself, and um. You know, my last, like, I never knew about treatment centres, like, do you know what I mean? I never thought about it, I never even thought I had a problem at this stage. After going through all this, after going through all the dark, dark things and everything, I never thought it was the drink and the drugs, like, um, I really didn't. I generally did not think it was the drink and drugs, I just thought it was myself, and, and I hated myself and I hated who I'd become. And, and my, my last suicide attempt, which would be December 2017, is it? Yeah, 2017. Um, I, I just had enough, like, I, I, uh, I generally had enough, but like, I suppose I'd say, sorry, no, but like, you know, even after the few suicide attempts coming up, like, like my, my first few suicide attempts, like, you know, I used to even say to myself, I was like, you can't even kill yourself, right, you know what I mean, like, um, as in, like, you're just a failure, you know what I mean, I thought mm -hmm. I'd fail, like, in even trying to take my own life, I couldn't do it, like, um, 
I, and that was just, that, that's just the way it was. Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, that's what was going on inside my head. Like how much I hated myself and how much I hated I'd become. Um, but my last suicide attempt, like I uh, was in my friend's house and they all got the bed, and I continued to stay up drinking and I continued to stay up taking drugs. And uh, I was just sitting there, and, and I still remember clear as day, like sitting there, uh, and I seen what was in front of me. That that, that I seen the back of the tablets, like that that I knew if I took that I, I wouldn't wake up, like. And uh, and I done it like you know what I mean. And I took him, and I knew I was gone. And I didn't ring anyone. I didn't text anybody. I I, I didn't care. Like do you know what I mean. I thought I thought it'd be the only way I'd get away from myself and get away from the problems I had inside. Like was to end my life. Like and uh, that was December twenty seventeen. Um, and and I I woke up from this like, and I was projectile vomiting. But the whole inside of my stomach line had come up and my liver was failing on me and, and uh, if I didn't go to the hospital when I got brought to the hospital I, I wouldn't be here now like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here and I, and I wouldn't get through what I got through and I wouldn't be here but like I remember being in intensive care in the hospital um, for like eight days I think it was eight nights I was, I was in intensive care in the hospital and like they had me on the list for a, a, the waiting list for a liver transplant like the, what I done to me and like I remember seeing my parents' face every single morning when I woke up and I shouted at them and I asked them to leave and I said I didn't want them here and stuff like and uh, it was horrible like do you know what I mean but I put them through like uh, uh, for so long like uh, and I couldn't get over the fact that they were still supporting me and they, and they were still there like you know what I mean and, and like no matter what I done to them like they were still sitting at the end of my bed every morning I woke up like and, 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 and I feel that's kind of what got to me like do you know what I mean that that like in, in that in that bed in the hospital was the first time I kind of realised maybe I might have a problem, like, you know what I mean? And my dad would have gone through like addiction problems and stuff for his brothers and, and like, he mentioned treatment like and I remember making the phone call from the treatment or from the hospital bed about treatment like and I said I'd give it a shot like because um, like I just didn't want, I didn't I never wanted to feel the way I felt when I woke up in the hospital bed again. Like I, I generally I can, it still haunts me today, like so I mean I still have that I can still do you know what I mean? I still have that feeling and I still I still know how it feels and I still know the look on their faces and, and I cried every day in the hospital, like, you know what I mean? Uh, and it was horrible, like, and, and I went straight from the CUH um, to Tabor Lodge, um, which would be my first treatment centre I went to, and, like, I went down there broken, like, I, uh, I was a shell of a person I was, like, do you know what I mean? I, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, like, I, I, like, I was going down thinking it was going to be like a jail cell, like, do you know what I mean, that I was going to be up in my room when I come down from my concert and I go back up, and I just didn't know what to expect, like, and I remember I got down there, and I was like 48 kg, um, 50 kg, yellow in the face from the sodium they were giving me to, to make my liver come back, like, and, and I cried, like, and I cried every night down there, like, and, and I didn't know what I'd get myself into, like, do you know what I mean, I still thought I was alone, like, and I still didn't know what was, why, what was going on, like, do you know what I mean? And, and I was getting horrible nightmares, and I was getting weird dreams, and I was just remembering exactly how I felt in the hospital, and, and, and these things still haunt me today, like, do you know what I mean? And, uh... Are you trying to take a breath? No, 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 it's going to. Oh, yeah. Do you want some water? No, yeah, all right, all right, all right. She's just yeah. not asking you. No, it's going to, it's going to just kill oh, it. No worries, she's... Oh, yeah. She's so much, she's brilliant, she's just like... She's like, I'm gonna get a word. <laughs> That's a great sign. Go ahead, yeah. keep going. Oh yeah, it's my story, though, like, do you know what I mean? And, and, I, and I kind of think I feel I need to say it. Like, mm. um, and, and I was in Table Lodge, like, and, and like it was nothing compared to what what, what I thought it was going to be like. And, and I was down there, and I cried, and I still thought I was alone. And, and like, I remember on the second night, I had to tell my story down there, like, do you know what I mean? To, to the group of people that were there, like, and, and, and I said one, one line, of what I had tried to scribble out in a piece of paper and I cried and I couldn't finish it like and I couldn't finish my story and and, and I went back up to that my bedroom and I cried and I cried and I couldn't then like again my parents were coming down every visiting day my family were with friends had come down to me like and visited me like do you know what I mean and the scene you down there and stuff like that and then that's what kind of kind of changed me a little bit like just seeing the support I had and and kind of open up to a counsellor and opening up for the first time like, like for so long I, I just took drugs as I said to suppress the feelings and emotions I had and, and down here and I was stripped from all drugs and all drink and I had nothing but myself and I was left with myself and what was inside me do you know what I mean and, and, and that was my first time without, without drugs or alcohol in my system for nearly three four years before that like, you know what I mean um, so it was a really weird experience like 
and it was my first time ever sitting down with a counsellor and stuff, my first time in group settings, you know, it was just really, really, it was a very strange experience, like, but like, I think it was after about two or three weeks down there like that, like, that, 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 like, I kind of started listening to people, like, do you know what I mean? And listening to how people were speaking and how they were feeling and like, how, and how they were opening up about their problems, like, do you know what I mean? And, and that, 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 every person that spoke, I could relate to something, you know what I mean? And maybe it wasn't exactly my story, but, but I could relate to something they were saying, like, and, uh, and it kind of, it kind of helped me a bit, like, do you know what I mean? Um, and I remember my, the first group I opened up, like, and I started speaking a bit, like, it wasn't much, you know, like, do you know what I mean? It was about 100 miles an hour to struggle. And I went up to bed that night, and I felt like a weight was lifted from my chest that I spoke about it, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I was a person that would never speak to anyone about any problems, no friends, no family, I wouldn't tell them, like, do you know what I mean? I'd just keep it bottled up, and, and I got that self sense of relief from it, like, when I, when I, when I opened up down there. And that's when kind of, I started to open up in groups, I started to speak to my counselor and stuff like, and, and, and the more I done it, and the more I spoke about, the better I felt like in myself, and, and, and it, kind of, it was like a weight lifted off my chest as I said, like, um, opening up about things now, like like my suicide attempts, and, and the problems that were going on in my head, and the thoughts, it's not even just saying the thoughts that were going on in my head out to somebody, like, do you know what I mean? And, and, and it was just a weight lifted off me, like, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and like, the more, the more time went past down there, like, the kind of more I was able to speak about things and, and the little bit the better I was feeling and stuff. And uh, I remember I was leaving Table Lodge after four weeks down there, um, and uh, I didn't know if I wanted to sign back in for another month or if I wanted to go back out because down there you're stuck in this. There's no temptations, there's no one, do you know what I mean? I literally didn't leave this campus for a month, like, do you know what I mean? There was no one, there was no Instagram, there was no Facebook, there was no phones, there was no social media, there was nothing, do you know what I mean? It was just me and myself and my thoughts. And, and, and it was the best thing for me. What I needed is I needed to get away and I needed to break away from everything and people and whatever. And, um, oh yeah. It, it, it's so strange, like, you know, thinking back now as I'm speaking about it, like, do you know, the support I got from people when I went down there and stuff like, um, like, still to today, like, nearly fucking a year and a half on, I still see a counselor, do you know what I mean? I still speak, like, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, you know, I was suggested to go to secondary treatment when I was in Table Lodge, and I leave my house when I got out of Table Lodge, like, for a, a week or two, like, because all I wanted to do was get into the secondary treatment centre because I thought this was going to be, that, that, that a month wasn't enough to fix me, like, it was still, so I was still down myself, I, I was still kind of in on myself, like, I still, like, fair enough, I got a bit of confidence and I was able to speak down there, but now this is back in the real world, as I call it, like, you know what I mean? And people, like, just noticed that I disappeared off the planet for a month and, <coughs> sorry. Oh, um, and, like, and, like, it, it was just crazy, like, do you know what I mean? Coming back out, like, and, like, it was actually right week when I came out, like, and, and people, that I did see were like, oh, are you going out tonight? And, and, and I couldn't answer them, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. that was a big thing for me, like, it, 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 is, is how am I going to tell people that, that, that I was in treatment? Like, how am I going to tell people that I was in rehab? What are they going to think? Like, and that was something I thought of a lot when I was down there, it's like, what are people going to think of me when they find out that I'm 22 years of age in, in a treatment center? Like, you know what I mean? And, and, and to be honest, a lot of people that I thought would have been friends of mine, like, were just like, it's just a phase, you'll be grand and stuff like, but like, Drinking drugs took a lot more than just money for me, like, do you know what I mean? And, and then that's when I kind of realised that I wasn't a phase, like, and I really did have a problem, like, like they brought me to try and take my own life on numerous occasions, like, um, so, like, I kind of realised who was actually there to support me, and, and who was actually there for me, like, when I went through all this, like, um, and, like, I thought I'd hit rock bottom loads things before that, like, but, like, the hospital bed was, was rock bottom, I know I'm jumping back and forth and over it now, but I'm just a little bit of a um, But I went down to the secondary treatment centre anyway, which is Fellowship House, um, and like, I had heard like, in Narcotics Anonymous meetings and stuff like that, like, oh, you have to go to Fellowship House, and, and it works and stuff, like, not everyone, but some people, some people swear by the place, like, uh, and I, I went to Fellowship House, uh, after about, uh, about a month out of the table, I went to Fellowship House, and um, same again, it was, they bring routine into your life, do you know what I mean? Same as table lodge, like you get up in the morning, you do something in the morning, meditate, um, you, you clean your room, you know, they bring a routine into your life, 
just to keep your mind occupied and, and, and to live by routine. And I still do live by routines today. Like, but um, after uh, after four weeks in this secondary treatment centre, I, I, I got asked to leave. Like, they kicked me out of the treatment centre, uh, which is something I actually have never spoke about like um, to people and, and and about anyone. Like, and like after that, they asked me to leave because I, I was gambling. Like, and gambling is another addiction. And, and I and I was in the wrong. Like, do you know what I mean? And automatically, I went back to thinking you're a failure again. Like you're, you're nothing. You know what I mean? And I remember making phone calls to my parents, and I cried on the phone, being like, "I've done it again." Like, do you know what I mean? I messed up again. Like, and uh, and that was a really, really hard time for me. Like, because I was sitting in the set outside drinking into my bags, packed, crying, being like, "What are they going to think of me?" Like, you know what I mean? Water, like, I, I thought I was done. Like, do you know what I mean? I thought automatically it was, I was going straight back into where it was, but 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 I wasn't. Like, you know what I mean? I I'd learned I've what I've learned in the treatment centers that I was in and stuff like, uh, and I spoke to people like I rang people that I've met in the narcotics and the meetings which which are great like you know I, mean, I never even knew these things happened like and and there's like two three meetings on every day, um there's numbers there there's helplines to ring and stuff like and these are things I used when I got thrown out of this treatment center and I went to two meetings a day, for for the first two months I got thrown out like and uh, and I went down to a recovery based CE scheme in Churchfield, um. So basically, again, it's just routine and stuff. Like it's for people that that get we're from uh, just out of jail and treatment centres and, and, and people people that need a bit of help. Like um, you know what I mean. Like when I got asked to leave the second treatment centre, like I I uh, I thought I'd fail again. Like you know what I mean. And again, like it was back with the self hatred and stuff. Like and um, I went to Churchfield Community Trust, like which is a a, C a recovery based C scheme in the north side. Like and uh, I went there every day. Like you know what I mean. I wasn't getting paid or nothing for it, like whatever. But like. I was there every day, and like it was like gardening now and stuff, and growing vegetables and stuff like, and, and there was counselors there, and there was groups there, and, and some of the people I met there like, like are still my best friends today, like you know what I mean, and, and like it was them people that, that that helped me like, and like you know what I learned from being two treatment centers and stuff like it is it, routine, it's key like to I me mean? like, if I was a few a few a few weeks I just like, kind of started staying in bed and stuff, and I was just loving my own thoughts and stuff after you were up, and, and and it wasn't good for me like you know what I mean. I needed to get up and I needed to do something in the morning, I needed to get up at the same time, I needed to go to bed and I needed to keep my day filled, which is, which is what I'd done if it wasn't narcotics and anonymous meetings, it was up in that CE scheme and I, and I kind of got into training again uh, from from um, from that because one of the, two of the lads that were up in the CE scheme trained martial arts like, and, and they were coaches in the gym and, 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 and they were coming out to me to come down and stuff like, and I said I would, like, I'd give it a shot. Like, I remember my first training session, which was a uh, Training session jiu jitsu, like I got choked out with my own gi, like I had no idea what it was. It was like little light bunny jumping around the place and stuff. Like I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing, but like it was kind of a place I could go, and it, and it was a place I could forget about everything and forget about the madness that was still going on in my head and stuff. Like and from that, like I started training and like the lad, the lads in the gym I trained, Team FM, like like I still think to this day, like it's them that got me through getting thrown out of treatments in there, and it's them that keep me going today. Like you know what I mean? Um, like for for first few months and stuff like I didn't really have much money after coming out of treatments in there because I owed so much money that I was paying off from drug debts and stuff, and uh, I wasn't making much money. I was on fucking social welfare, like you know what I mean, and like I was late for membership and stuff, and I was always late and stuff. And they didn't they didn't mind, you know what I mean? They let me train like and and, and they were there for me, like you know what I mean, and uh, and that's what helped me so much, like you know what I mean, that I had something to do now, I had something to fill my time. And, and, and I'll be forever thankful for the lads for doing that, like, do you know what I mean? And they're some of my best friends today, like, um, but, like, I got into jiu-jitsu, and uh, it's crazy how, like, finding something that you can be passionate about and finding something that can fill your time and, and make you happy actually does for a person, like, do you know what I mean? Like, no longer was I taking drugs or drinking, and, like, I didn't know what I was going to do with my time when I wasn't doing these, because everything, again, was, like, Drug related or drink related or going out related and stuff like, I know I found this like I found training like, and I trained every day like you know what I mean literally every single day I was training. Some people could say I was over training and stuff like, but but I had found something to fill my time and, and, and do it like, and uh, you know it was just great like you know I, I remember I was thinking there like what I'm gonna do you know I was saying like, what am I gonna do with my time like and stuff and so like. I was like, there's nothing to do in car other than drink, like, you know what I mean? And, and I think that's a big thing now, like, with our generation and stuff, like, everything is drink related. Everything, every, every social event, everything, 
everything you do on the weekend is drink related. Where are we going for a pint? Who's going out? Whatever. Like, mm. Any group chat you go to, who's going out? What are you doing? Where are you getting this from? Who's going there? Do you know what I mean? And like, that was huge for me. Like that. What, what, what was I going to do? Like, you know what I mean? And, and I got into training, I suppose. Like, but like, um, yeah, and like, do you know, a, a big thing for me is sort of setting little goals to myself. Like, I know I'm hopping and jumping and stuff now, but like, oh, this is kind of my, my, my kind of one of my first times speaking about my story and stuff. Do you know, kind of. She's a brilliant. She's uh, you're like a, a veteran. <laughs> I um, like, I've, I've done two guest speakers. Like, in, in, I've been a guest speaker twice in two different treatment centres. I went back down to Tabor Lodge, the first treatment centre I was in, and I went to Cara Lodge and. Uh, it's down west somewhere, I think uh, it's a young teenage boy treatment centre and I told my story there and stuff. And like by I feel by like by telling my story and stuff like do you know what I mean and, and by speaking about it and being a bit open about it, like that, like if I help one person like, do you know what I mean, that, that's my job done like uh, and, and I just want to get it to people that like there is help out there, like you know what I mean, and, and it is okay not to be okay and and, and 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 it is okay to speak to someone, like, do you know what I mean? And it's okay to feel bad, and it's okay to have mental health problems. And, and every a lot of people, everyone has mental health. Do you know what I mean? Everyone has mental health, but it's just some people deal with theirs better than others. And, and, and I feel by speaking about it and stuff that 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 every time you speak about it, I get that somewhat a bit easier. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, in my own experience, like, you know what I mean? And and, and I suppose that's why I kind of still speak to people today. Like, you know what I mean? I I have. A couple of friends, and I have a counselor, and, and I have NA meetings, uh, and I've got meetings where I still go on regularly. Like, uh, and people ask me, Why am I still going like 15 months down the line? And I'm like, Because I need it, like, you know what I mean? I need to speak, I need to speak about what's going on for me, and I need to speak about how I'm feeling it because this is traits I've learned in treatment centers and stuff that I know help me. Like, so why would I stop doing something that helps me? And, and, and like, you know, I, I'm not ashamed to say it, like I'm a recovering drug addict now, like, and I will be for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? And, and I need to keep ticking that over, like, you know what I mean? I need, I need to keep ticking that over, and I need to keep reminding myself for that, like. So yeah, I ask questions stuff there because I'm kind of. Oh yeah, well, look, Mike, Mike, I'll be honest, with you, that's an incredible story. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, I know anyone that's watching this now at this point is probably in tears as well. Um, I don't know how I'm after keeping it together, to be honest with you. But geez, fair play, that's such an incredible story. And do you know to be honest with you, I actually I don't really have any questions. You've answered all of my questions. But um I'd actually leave it there if that's alright with you because yep. uh, I can't add, I can't add anything to that. <laughs> uh geez, fair play, Mikey. Uh, I'm gonna leave a load of helplines below in case anyone does need help. Yeah. Um, I'm you. gonna leave your Instagram and stuff if anyone wants to like, get on to you as well. Mikey, a uh, pleasure to have you on. Guys, thanks so much for watching at home. Uh, until next time, this has been the Diddy Crow Show. See you later. Thank you.